Hey, what's up? It's Kit. Time for another video. And today, we are going to talk about some tips on how to make your drinking better. Before we start, if you have not subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. This channel talks about the hows and whys of fishing. And we cover everything from big game, ultralight, everything in the middle, including fly fishing. Today, we're talking about how to make your jigging better. Small things stack up, guys. And honestly, sometimes it's just a moment of carelessness or maybe the just downright you don't know what you're doing. And hopefully, you'd be able to get some tips here and make your jigging better and you start catching more fish okay so here's a, a very good example so i tied this up put this together as an example okay put it the center here so that you would be able to see now what i'll do is actually zoom in so that you can see exactly what i'm talking about okay so as you can see here, we have a knot. And I even went further. What I, what I actually did was to put a loop knot here. Okay. We have a treble at the back. We have our assist hooks. Okay. So if you didn't notice, first and foremost, you shouldn't do this. Okay. See, the eyes of the jigs most times have damage even if you don't feel them actually some microscopic scratches there that would scratch your leader as this one is right here as because it's tied up to the eye and sometimes there are some microscopic scratches or even really bad scratches because we're putting some split rings you know the the pliers may or may not touch it but the split rings going in and out of that eye will cause some damage even when the wire is being bent okay so like take for example this one right here if it's bent there's bound to be some scratches there somewhere and that will make a nick on your leader and it won't happen immediately but it happens when a big fish hits little weakness there that gets cut so bad idea and that's that's probably one of the most important things right there so don't do that okay also if you have something like this what's gonna happen is that you'll say that well you know that's wrong you should tie from the solid drink great in this particular case, what happens is that if you tie onto the solid ring, the hooks move up. Okay. First and foremost, of course, if you look closely, these are slow jigging hooks. And it shouldn't be the case because what you want is something like this. Okay. These are fast jigging hooks. As you can see, they're actually on opposing sides instead of actually going like that okay so slow jigging hooks versus fast jigging hooks now on a fast jigging hook or assist hook what you do is put your jig or your split ring there in the middle okay so your jig actually sits like that and these would be like that not like this so it's not to say that these hooks wouldn't catch they will now the biggest problem here is that when you put them uh when you put your your knot here it pulls it up and it's shorter also look at the position okay even if you're flipping it down like that it it's go, goes on top okay and it becomes short and that's probably the most important point there it just gets short 
and what you want is to have your hooks practically where most of the bites are now I'm gonna zoom in even more just to show you what I'm talking about here okay so in this particular jig if you can see the bite marks are there see and lower down here so which means that this particular jig the fish are biting around this area and your hook is here okay so you're gonna miss a lot of fish so this is these are things that you actually should be paying attention to because well this will cost you a lot of fish and this is a mistake that a lot of people actually uh, make because when they're fishing they're thinking that since on YouTube they see a lot of people just putting the shorter hooks it's always the correct way which of course is not okay now again the bite marks are here your hook is here okay and if you pull it it becomes shorter then you could see that it's just too far sometimes you get a hit on the head you know but these marks right here this is from me hitting um, some solid thing like a rock okay while I was casting because this is this is a shore jigging jig okay but most of the bite marks are concentrated around here you'll see like holes okay and if your treble or sorry your assist hook is not long enough you're gonna miss a lot of fish okay so this is this is one of those things really that a lot of people tend to kind of forget when they're doing doing their fishing is that even if they they see it on YouTube that are people are doing like shorter um, length assist hooks what's gonna happen is that they will miss the thing is there's no real formula for this because it's according to what fish are in your locality and whatever fish it might be could be different from what you're watching on YouTube and that's where the problem starts if the fish are biting here and your assist hook is here of course you're not gonna hook them now treble hooks there's nothing wrong with treble hooks but what I found is that for longer jigs putting a treble hook at the back is actually kind of not too productive and it really does very little okay I would rather actually have a longer assist hook than a treble and also a lot of people would have their hooks on top like that okay there is a heavy part and there's a lighter part of a jig you'll see sometimes that on the bottom it's a bit more thicker and on top it's a bit more slimmer and by design what happens is that the jig would naturally fall on that position and when you're swimming it with your hooks on top just doesn't balance right so if you put it on the belly because the hooks will naturally go down like that and when you're jigging you're moving the jig the hooks will set better there instead of drooping here and possibly snagging the body another thing that you notice here is that the the split ring is actually quite big okay and for me what I found is that the smaller the split ring I could put there the better the bigger rings will tend to have your assist hooks move more and I want to restrict mine so that it's kind of pegged into position striking position so that when the fish bites the hooks are there and that's the whole point um, as far as the split rings are concerned they're just a connection point the only thing that I actually worry about is the strength of the split ring it should match the line that I'm using and the drags that I'm using and the size 
I want it to be as small as possible. As small as I can get away with. Okay? So there are different there are different types of jigs and obviously different shapes. We know that there are sliders, okay? Those. This is a fluttering jig. It also kind of slides. There are jigs that backslide, okay? Kind of like uh, slow jigs. And for those jigs, I would put two assist hooks, one on, the, one on each end. And it doesn't matter if it's single assist hooks or double assist hooks. Let's say this is a backslider, okay? Or a slider, or a sliding jig, or a slow jig, or a long slow jig. Having two there is advantageous because if it slides this way, okay, if it slides in this direction, if it slides this way, the fish will immediately, by instinct, think that wherever direction it's going, that's where his head is. And that's where they grab around the head, okay? Depending on the species, of course, if mostly barracuda, they will bite in the middle. But whichever direction the jig travels to, the fish conceive as the head. So it means that if it's sliding backwards, the fish would think that it's head because fish always swim where their head's pointed, okay? Except for probably fish like clown knife fish and uh, I believe an elephant fish would be able to do that as well. That they could swim backwards. But majority of the fish that you would encounter swim where their head is pointed. So if your jig doesn't have an assist hook at the back and it's sliding backwards okay, or it's dropping down, chances are you're going to miss that fish. So... There are some jigs where it's better to not put something on the bottom, okay? So take for example, you are fast jigging and the direction is always heading up and you're using a short jig as opposed to a long sliding jig. It's better to actually just have the assist hook on top. This is the jig that made my last trip. Let me zoom in. So as you can see, the bite marks are all over this thing. Okay. And my hook is exactly where most of the bite marks are, where the concentration of the bite marks are. And this is... This is actually pretty important that a lot of people don't consider. Now, if I was using something shorter, obviously I would have missed quite a few. But pretty much every time I dropped, I hooked something. And you can see right there, most of the bites are practically where the hook was sitting. Okay. Now, um, I rig this and I, I rig it always on the bottom of the jig not on top like that even if it's facing out always like that and that i believe is one of those factors that actually helped me get a lot more strikes now these are little things that you could do and these little things actually stack up and that's very important. Now, one of the things that I also want to point out is that if you're using smaller split rings, you will need different sets of pliers. So I use one, one tool with a really, really small nib right there. Okay. And there's, there's a lot, there's a lot from a lot of different brands. And then I have this one, which is practically my all-arounder. It could do the small ones, it could do the bigger ones, and then also I have one that's quite big for bigger ones. And they're all very compact split ring pl pliers. 
the most important thing there is that do not use something this big okay with the big uh, prying part okay with a big notch for small split rings because aside from the fact that it might not fit in the hole of the split ring it will damage the split ring and this is something that that you should avoid especially on micro jigging now on the bigger ones there are like pliers that that don't have springs and those those ones that are actually really thick the nibs and they're used mostly for gt fishing and when you're using them on thinner split rings they actually destroy the split ring so once the split ring has a gap you have to chuck it you have to really change and this is just really basic housekeeping okay now this is the fast jig configuration i use now, whether it be two hooks going like that okay or a single hook like that for my slow i'll give you a very good example okay so we're not talking about brands this is what i have so i'm using it as an example okay now when you're rigging slow jigs always remember that for slow jigs there is a heavy side and then there's a flat side the heavy side is designed to actually keep the jig in that position the flat flat side or semi flat side is always going to be the side pointing up and that's also where you put your hooks some people actually put it like that it doesn't mean to say it's wrong because it still catches fish okay it's just that the body of the jig might actually prohibit you or make you miss a lot of strikes now if it's here there's nothing to snag and the fish would always well they they get hooked more and when it swims if it's on the bottom it'll flail around and there's a tendency for your hooks to actually snag it will flail around like that and there's a tendency for your hooks to snag whereas if it's on top like that they would just go up another thing i'd like to point out is again the smaller split ring and then instead of tying to the solid ring right there i installed another split ring or sorry solid ring into the split ring okay and you can see that as far as the hooks are concerned they're pretty much in the middle almost you know just a tad there okay so since this is a short stubby jig most of the time the bite marks are always going to be around the middle okay so sorry i have to move around here there's no marker and uh when you're zooming in and out it's kind of difficult anyway so so that's pretty much it all right now the last thing i want to talk about is actually the knot and i'll show you a very easy chain knot a lot of people struggle with making a chain knot and i don't blame them it's it's actually not not easy for most people um it's actually there is a way to tie it really easy okay and i'm gonna zoom out a bit okay we'll focus here okay there we go okay so most people there's there's different ways to tie the the uh, chain knot you know some people actually go three times some people go two okay some people just from that loop they tighten up and then they start their chain knot okay just like that now what i'm going to show you actually quite easy you double up okay 
pass through like that just like that and then from there do your half hitches now this is tight it should be then you start your half hitch okay Open up and then one from the bottom okay you do that a few times okay and at the very end what you do is just if you do probably about I don't know 10 centimeters or so sorry millimeters okay length and uh, they'll give you a really good spring effect on this thing okay now on the very last one all you have to do is just loop it around three four times To lock the thing in place okay now I'm gonna focus here just so you can see and you, see, you, you can see that there's actually two holding there and they're separate separated okay and that matters a lot these two and it shouldn't cross you can see there it doesn't so this is a very good way for you to have a chain knot and it doesn't have to be difficult it's just a strong the strength of this is actually on the half hitches which acts like a spring all right so that's it guys um hope these little things actually help you out uh kind of just housekeeping really and it becomes a habit after a while and it these will certainly really help you if you just practice them all right so from rigging jigs uh choosing your assist hook length the size of the hooks small split rings uh using the right assist hook for the right type of jig very very simple formula and it will really help you out all right so yep if you haven't yet please like and if you like what you see please look around the channel there's more of these types of videos and consider subscribing if you haven't yet that's it for now thanks so much for watching and guess what i'll see you in the next one